Celestial Television Network. Now, this church is the church that is led by the Spirit. Now, how many pastors or ministers starts a church without knowing its name? How many shepherds will start a parish? without knowing the name. God gave me the name of this church almost 15 to 20 years before it started. Hallelujah. There are many shepherds like that. Even before they build the church, they've already printed letterhead. They've registered it in K2. They've registered it in Nigeria. They've registered it here in Canada. So there's always a name. Now, even if the denomination is not celestial, You call it a uh, five corners ministry. Cornerstone Chapel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You call it all these beautiful names. Or oh, now we have a uh, ministry, Oloko Pastor. The Michael Bakari. Ministry. Michael Bakari. You know what? But in the celestial church of Christ, in the encounter of the 23rd of May, 1947, when he spent three months in the, in the wilderness, the Lord called unto Papa Oshof and said, Lully, grace. At that time, he did not know the name of the church. After three months of wandering in the wilderness, he did not know the name of the church. From May to June, from June to July, July to August, he was wandering. He did not know the name of the church. On the 29th of September, Holy Michael's Day, 1947, they held the first service of this great church. And still he did not know the name. Who starts a ministry without knowing the name? But he did not want to speak of himself. He had to be led by who? I cannot hear. He had to be led by who? Holy Spirit. This church is a church that is led by the Spirit. We cannot contextualize what the Lord has given unto us. We cannot try to rationalize the mysteries of the heavens. Now, maybe it was that the Lord said that, okay, don't worry, sometime soon I will give him the name. So maybe the members were going to meet him. The Bible, the constitution says that in those days they used to call him evangelist. They would go to Papa and say, Papa, uh -huh, what's the name of this church again? Papa, what's the name of this church again? But Papa did not know. Until one day, a prophet, Alexander Yanga, went into trance. And from that trance, the Lord said, this is the name of the church. And he brought the name from heaven, not by the hand of the founder, but by a prophet who the Lord brought into the church. Look at your neighbor and say, there is Holy Spirit. There is Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, and the Holy Spirit works. Somebody said, hallelujah. The person came into the church to join. 
And it's the person that the Lord revealed this, the church name to. Eglise the Christian Abbey Celeste. Oh, yeah, say it in French. Let me hear. Eglise the Christian Celeste. Uh-huh. Eglise the Christian name Celeste. The name came in French. And then it was translated to Celestia Church of Christ in English. You have to understand that the foundation of this church is built upon the blood of Jesus Christ. But the functionality of this church is powered by the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. The foundation of this church is built upon the blood of Jesus Christ. But the functionality of the church is powered by the Holy Spirit. And that's why the, the song says that by the power of the blood of Jesus, that the Father founded it. So why will we not celebrate Pentecost? Because this church is a Pentecostal church. What's the meaning of Pentecost? He was celebrating the day the Holy Spirit came. If a church is powered by the Holy Spirit, is it not a Pentecostal church? I cannot hear you. Is it not a Pentecostal church? Look at your neighbor and say, welcome to this Pentecostal church. If you didn't know it before, I will tell you. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. If I tell you something is something for long enough, you begin to believe it. If I tell you, what is this? No, what is this? This is not a candle, it's a stick. It's a stick. Okay? This is a what? Mm -hmm. I didn't say candlestick. This is a what? A wooden stick. Say wooden stick. Uh If I tell you that for 10 years, one day you wake up and you say, please bring me that wooden stick. Even though it's what? It's a candle. So the fact that somebody may hijack a name for something that does not have the functionality of that name, you have to ponder deeply in your heart. Even though God sent the church through him, the arrangement of the church he did not know. If you go to many Anglican churches, Methodist churches, the choir is on this side. Not on that side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They alternate in different churches. Male and female, they sit together. But the Lord entered another person, Mawunyo, his nephew, a prophet. He went into spirit and trance. He took oranges and arranged them on the ground and said that this is the way you must sit in the celestial church of Christ. It was not done by the founder. The Lord brought somebody to do it. By the power in the Holy Spirit. I can hear Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. I want you to realize that even when we started the Celestial Church of Christ on the, on the 29th of September, 1947, when the first service was held, we did not ring the bell. Back down, back down, back down. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. It wasn't rank. Do you know why? It was not part of the service. He just held the service as he knew to. But Baba Shofa said that he had a vision one day that he saw a place that had a second floor. The second floor was transparent. So he could see what they were doing there. And he heard the bell ring. And he saw the beings on that second floor who were filled with white. He saw them bow before the throne of grace, saying, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. At that instant, the Lord said that you must add that to the worship of the church. Is that done by the wisdom of man? No. Did he put down a group and say, yeah, let us have a working committee to arrange it. Let us have a committee of learned people so we can set the service of the church. It is led by what? Holy. The Holy Spirit. 
Look at your number and say, today you will receive it. Today ah, you don't like that person. Look at somebody else and say, today you will receive it. Today you receive it. Okay, if you don't like them, look at somebody handsome and say, today you will receive it. Today you receive it. Somebody say, hallelujah. I noticed that none of you look at me. You say, I'm watching all of you. You looked at me. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Eli. The power that radiates from the throne of grace cannot be contained by man. Eli. It's too much. The Bible says that, ah, Moses, you want to see my face? Don't worry. I will, I will just move by. I will pass by. You will see my back. You will pass by. The Bible says God passed by. And Moses saw the essence of God. He saw the essence of God. But Moses was still Moses. Moses didn't change. He did not know he had changed. The Bible said that when Moses was coming down from the mountain, his face was shining like the sun. That people could not look at him. Why? Because he beheld the essence of God. I don't want you to throw away spirituality. It is important for your development. And I'm going to explain some certain things to you so you can understand what today is about. Amen? Amen. I can hear you. Amen? Amen. The celebration of Pentecost in this church has been hijacked by the prophets. Has been hijacked by who? The prophets. We have to do something. Then for every Pentecost, we prophets, we come together, we celebrate with pomp and pageantry. You see a lot of programs all over the place, night vigils, people going to spirit, they will show not, they will do this, they will do that. But is Pentecost really about the prophets? We have been dealing with this for many, many years. Celebrating the day of Pentecost. But really, is Pentecost about the prophets? Now, Pentecost is not an injunction that originated in the New Testament. Because Pentecost, pent, means five. Pent means what? Five. Pentecost is 50 days after resurrection. Because when Jesus resurrected, he spent 40 days with his disciples, teaching them, opening their eyes of understanding. After the 40 days, he ascended, like we did ascension service here 10 days ago. 10 days after ascension was Pentecost. Now, the Lord says that on the day of resurrection is a day that the mankind received salvation. 50 days after this, the Lord said, I will give you the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. But let us look in the book of Leviticus to see how this whole scenario, scenario started very quickly. Yes? Leviticus um, 23, verse 16. Yes? Kilo Zombe. Even up to the morrow. Yes? After the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number 50 days? After the seventh Sabbath, you must count how many days? 50 days. 50 days. And After the day of Passover, you must count 50 days. As we are celebrating Pentecost as Christians, the Jews are celebrating a celebration called Shavuot which is the 50 days after the Passover. You must count 50 days, yes? And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You must come to offer, offer a new sacrifice unto God. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of... Read verse 21. And ye shall proclaim on the self-same day. On that same day you will proclaim what? That it may be an holy convocation unto you. Uh-uh. Hold on, ma. Okay. A holy what? Holy convocation. convocation. Since the time of Moses. 
after 50 days, it must be a holy convocation for you and I. We must consecrate that day like we are doing today. I want you to understand something. That the day of Pentecost, thank you very much, you can be seated. It's not about the prophets. And the topic of my sermon is called Pentecost is about you. Look at your neighbor and say, Pentecost is about you. Pentecost is about you. No, you didn't say it very well. Say, Pentecost is about you. Pentecost is not fundamentally a celebration of the prophets, but it is the celebration of the final phase of God's salvation strategy. It is not fundamentally a celebration of the prophets, but it is a celebration of God's final salvation, the final phase of God's salvation strategy. Now, what is God's salvation strategy? Man was created in a beautiful garden. We are meant to grow old there. Unfortunately, we sinned. We lost the inheritance. God separated himself from us. God was ready to destroy man. But because God is a gracious God, hallelujah, hallelujah. God said, I'm going to save man. God said, I'm going to do what? Save. I'm going to save man. So he sent the prophets. He sent Moses. He sent Elijah. He sent Elisha. He sent uh, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah. He sent Zephaniah, Habakkuk. He sent Obadiah, Joel, Jonah. He sent who? Who else? Hosea, Haggai, Malachi, Micah. Man did not listen. God was angry. That was the first phase of God's salvation strategy. That you must leave the past and come into the future. You must forsake everything that you did before and come anew unto me. But man refused to repent. God was angry and said, I'm going to destroy man. The Bible said that for 400 years, between the book of Malachi and Matthew, God did not speak to man. There was no prophecy, there was no vision, there was no communication. It was blank. For 400 years, there was nothing. But for God to open another phase of the strategy, there needed to be a key. Now that key is what Jesus Christ came to give us. That key is the blood that was shed upon the cross of Calvary to open the new opportunity for us to be saved into God's kingdom. And therefore, the second phase was the phase of the apostles. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the apostles. The apostles. He, he, he unlocked that phase with the blood of Jesus. So he sent Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Paul, Silas, Barnabas, Aquila, Priscilla. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> he sent so many people in the scriptures. Philemon, Jude. He sent John the Baptist. He sent so many apostles into the world. Now maybe in this second phase, with the key of the blood, maybe the people will listen. Did people listen? No. I can't hear. Did people listen? No. Even while Christ was with us, people did not listen. So as Christ was going, he said, you know what? I cannot leave you fatherless. I need to send you another comforter. Somebody that will teach you the way. That will show you the way. That will show you the path of salvation. Are you following me? Yes. And on the day of Pentecost, he sent us the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is this Holy Spirit that has the GPS. The GPS location of heaven. It is the Holy Spirit that can help you negotiate the terror of this world in order for you to obtain the glory of heaven. It is this light 
that can remove you from condemnation and bring you to salvation. If you are part of that process, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, you are shouting hallelujah, you are sitting on your seat. You are shouting hallelujah. 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 Let us be seated. And the Lord sent us the Holy Spirit as a guiding enabler. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Wi-Fi that needs to connect you to who? To God. It is the unseen, powerful entity that will give you a connectivity to heaven. Whoever has his spirit will see his glory. You cannot see his glory without the spirit. The spirit of the Lord increases your capacity to withstand his glory. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive God into you because God is too big to contain you, for you to contain. Amen. Jesus is too big for you to contain. He's too powerful for you to contain. Therefore, you need the Holy Spirit that will give you the capability, that will give you the capacity to contain God within you. That is what we are celebrating today. We have a very famous uh, Bible verse that is normally read. I can bet you every Celestial Church is reading it today. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. And on that day, I shall send down my spirit. Yes, talo and be. Uh-huh. On that day, one marker. But I'm going, to go, I'm going to read one area that is not emphasized on. And I'm going to emphasize it for tonight, for this afternoon. Yes? Ba-ba-ba, Kalik Badra, Kusasiko. Yes? And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Afterwards. Afterwards. That I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. Upon all flesh. Not only on the prophets. Not only on the visioners. Not only on the dreamers. Not only on the children of prophets. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all men. So he said, today I will receive my own. Today I will receive my own. I'm not talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, oh. I'm not talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I teach prophets, I tell them that the gift of the Holy Spirit cannot take you to heaven. The gift of the Holy Spirit is what God has given you to help others live a good life on earth. Help to stabilize their journey. Are you following me? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is meant for us so that we can negotiate our way to heaven. There are two different things. If you have the gift and without, you don't have the fruit, your fame will be on earth. Your condemnation will be in heaven. People will hear you, uh -uh. <laughs> I know that guy. If he speak like this, thunder will suck Ah, uh -uh. Is it that prophet? If he close his eyes and open his eyes, the day will change. In the middle of the day, oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are in Sunday. It might be me, no matter the Jumio. If I close my eyes and open, it will turn to Monday. Here long will be like Someone shout Hallelujah. It will turn to Monday. Even if you have that kind of power and you don't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the people that will hail you are the people in this world. The angels will be watching you and they will be willing you. Oh, yeah, now receive meekness. Ha! Ah, receive long suffering. Ha! Ah, receive patience. Ha! Ah, ah, receive this. And they will be trying to prompt you into it because they know that without these characteristics, you cannot gain the kingdom. On that day, I will pull out my spirit upon all men. Yes? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I like it, Oh, yeah. Mungbo. Your old men shall dream dreams. Ekawe. Your old men shall see visions. Mungoma. 
And also upon the servant and upon the handmaid. Yes. In those days, yes. I pour out my spirit. We will use that one for prayer. Father, you said you will pour out your spirit. But it is more, there, there is a more important and fundamental verse that is there. I want to bring out for you. Yes, continue, ma. And I will show wonders in the heavens. Yes. And in the earth. Uh -huh. Blood and fire. Yes. And a pillar of smoke. Uh -uh. Don't we like that one? Blood and fire, what? Uh, smoke. Pillar of smoke. I can hear pillar of smoke. Uh -uh. Who doesn't like razzmatazz? Naman was angry. Somebody say Naman was angry. Naman was angry. I can't hear you say Naman was angry. Naman was angry. Why, why was he angry? Prophet stayed inside the house. Sent his servant to Naman outside, a very important man. I said, go and tell him to bath in the river of Jordan. He dismissed him. Number said, me. Ah, me, of all people. Number one, look at Jordan, the dirty river. Look at the beautiful rivers I have in Syria that I can bath. Number two, your prophet has the temerity to sit down inside the house and send you to me. I thought he would come out and wave his hands. That's what the Bible says. I thought he would come out and wave his hands and do his thing. Because the man was expecting razzmatazz. He was expecting blood and smoke. He cannot save you. Just like one of the old, old school songs. He said that Eje aguton kule banila Eje yele kule funi ni reo Jesus we all Jesus is calling you into his presence this day That you live by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit People are looking for blood fire and pillar of smoke eh uh -huh. The sun shall turn into darkness. Me and the moon into blood. The moon will turn to blood. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Now listen to verse 32. Listen very carefully. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever uh -huh. shall call on the name of the Lord. Because of this enabling power that you have been given in the Holy Spirit. When you call the name of the Lord, what will happen? Shall be delivered. You shall be what? Delivered. My Bible says you shall be saved. Thank you, Baba Mommy. Has she? Nobody reads to that level. Because it's not important for our physical manifestations. We stop there at 31 because we want to let blood and fire show. We peel out smoke. What are you waiting for? Baba Fabarare. You must show your power. God, you must show your power. You must show your power. Then God will show his power. What is left for you in the journey you have for heaven? What are you going to do to help you trans? Transit from here to the beautiful place. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that teaches you what you ought to do. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you instinct. The wife will tell the husband, husband, that engineering project, I don't think you should do it. Hallelujah. The other one will say that, when did you become engineer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the wife will look at the other one and say, when did you become engineer? Uh, what do you mean that I shouldn't do this project? Uh, please, 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 please. Don't put your nose in what you don't know. But what the man fails to realize is that the Lord had given that woman a spiritual instinct, enabled by the Holy Spirit to guide the path. It is true she may not be knowledgeable concerning engineering. But the Holy Spirit is knowledgeable of all things. The Bible said that when people saw the eloquence of Peter and they knew that he was on land, then they knew he had worked with Christ. You see somebody that didn't go to primary school, didn't go to secondary school, didn't go to university. He lived in the village the whole of his life. 
at the age of 45 came out without learning Yoruba, um, without learning English. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to speak for now. You know what I'm saying? Say amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Eh? Baba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you doing that one? He spoke with boldness and with confidence. They had, they had to make one conclusion that this man had worked with Christ. Now, what was the transfer that came between Jesus Christ and, and, and Peter? The transfer did not occur when Christ was here. The transfer occurred when Christ had gone and he sent the Holy Spirit. You will receive it today in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is necessary for your kingdom journey. I want you to realize something. There, there, every Christian, every true Christian, because I did a sermon a few months ago that Christianity has left the church. Christianity has left the church. What we are having now is social gathering, uh, money-making seminars, and uh, community relations operation. The Christianity has left the church. If you are looking for people who fight and don't forgive, go to church. If you're looking for people who defraud others, go to church. So there are so many things that have left Christianity that are now manifesting itself in the church. But one thing I want you to realize is this. If you are a true Christian, this world is not your home. This world is not your what? My it's not your home. There is a better place for you. And it's the Holy Spirit that can lead you into this better home. You wake up in the morning, you open the news, you open the newspaper, you go on the internet. Then you hear of bad news. Volcano operate, uh, erupting today. Tomorrow there is flood. Three days later there is famine. Another day there is a mass killing. Then you open the news, they say that 5,000 5, people have been sacked from one job. The economy is bad. The pedophiles on the prowl. Children are dying. You look at so many things. It is full of bad, bad, news. bad news all over the place. One day I sat down and I said there must be a better place. This cannot be it. There has to be a better place where you don't have to worry about the mortgage. Where you don't have to worry about the car payments. You don't have to worry about looking after your children. Before you get married, you worry. Father Lord, ha, shame you, you marry by. Am I not going to get married? Then you get married. Then you begin to worry. Ah, Father Lord, am I not going to have children? Then you have children. You say, Father Lord, how, how am I going to look after these children? Then God looks after them. Then you begin to worry. Ah, God, I'm getting old. Am I not going to get sick? Then you are healed. Then you are worrying. Ah, Lord, all this property, will people not take it away from me? One day are you going to have peace of mind in this wicked world? This world is not your home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This world is not your what? Home. There is a better place for us to go. It is the Holy Spirit that can tell us how to get there. I was watching something on social media recently. Two days ago. A man was being buried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they buried the coffin into the ground, which is normal. Is it not normal? It's normal. Uh, they buried the coffin 12 feet under. But where it began to depart from normal was when you saw his motorcycle inside the pit. Then they were throwing his clothes inside it. They were throwing all his wristwatch, his shoes, his suit into it. They said he didn't want to leave anything for his wife. Look at the fool. Say, be when they cover him, somebody will come at night and come and steal the Gucci. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Why you gonna say bute o fu? I just call it walk on. Why you gonna 
This world is vanity. It is vanity. People who are billionaires die. They will give everything they have so that they can maintain life. The Bible says that the spirit that quickened and the flesh profited nothing. Because without the Holy Spirit, you could not have any functionality into God's grace. Or into God's place that is prepared for you. This word is not yours. You need to get your passport. Look at your neighbor and say, go and get your passport. Go and get your passport. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, go and get your passport. If you see people, most of the people here are immigrants. Very few were born in Canada. If you see the way they will break dance when their color changes. You know what they mean by color changes? When your green passport turns to blue. Hey! Or your yellow passport, or indigo color. I don't know different countries' color. When the green, green e, uh, uh, ECOWAS, ECOWAS passport that has flower like this. <laughs> when it changes color to blue, you will hold party amongst your friends at home with your family. You will break bread. Say, my passport has changed. Now I have power. Not knowing that there's another passport you need to obtain to get to your real place. Somebody open the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 very quickly so I can close. Very quickly so I can close. Yes. Pentecost is about you. It's not about the prophets. It's about you receiving the Holy Spirit so you can enter into that large place he has provided for you. Yes. But our citizenship. Uh-huh. Is in heaven. She got one Ben Are you are serious? Our, mm -mm, our citizenship is where? Is so, so ask your neighbor, where is your passport? Where is your passport? I can't hear you. Ask your neighbor, where is your passport? Where is your passport? The Bible said that your citizenship is where? Yeah. So how can you get there? How are you going to get there? You cannot use another person's head. Oh, the Lord, your Lord. Malika Agbaemu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to use the head of uh, Ade and you are Olu? You think you can deceive the angels? The angels will look at you and say, mm -mm, this head is Ade's head. But you are Olu. Go back. You want to change name? You cannot change name. You can call yourself any name here. There's a name that is registered in heaven for you. Every day of Abraham's life that he was called Abram, he was denied what was his. When his name was changed to the name that was recognized in heaven, then he began to flourish. I pray for somebody at this place. The name that you will use that will attract the attention of the angels for favor and joy, God will give unto you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that our citizenship is in heaven. Yes? And from it, we await a savior. Thank Lord you. Jesus Christ. You can be seated. Amen. So how, what is your passport? The passport is the Holy Spirit. The passport is the Holy Spirit that can teach all things, that can help you negotiate the rigma role of this earth. And for you to land in a place of joy. Brethren in Christ, I want to announce something to you this morning, this afternoon. That without the spirit, you are an empty vessel. Oh, my brothers. Oh, my sisters. Art thou with Holy Spirit. Without spirit. In vain is man ask. Jesus shall give to thee. You need the spirit to move you forward. Now, knowing the word of God is different from being filled by the Holy Spirit. Oh. You can be a gospeler. You can be a theologian. You can be erudite. Eloquent. You can have powerful verbal dexterity. You are able to analyze 
and exegete the word of God so well that people will hail you and be kneeling down for you and they will be following you like minions. And still they don't have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 19, very quickly please. So we can rise and pray. Celestia Television Network.